Coming up, Campus observes those impacted by sexual violence around campus, how they're encouraging people to speak out. A department store staple finding a home for the holidays and beyond in downtown Milwaukee. And later, the basketball season kicks off next Monday. What our team is expecting from the Golden Eagles this season. Marquette Now comes your way right now. Hello and... From the Jeannie Hayes, Hayes Virtual, Virtual Studio. Studio, this is Marquette Now. Hello and welcome to Marquette Now. It's Wednesday, November 1st, and I'm Sam Bond. And I'm Aaron Howard. So great to have you here with us. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Marquette Athletics. Men's soccer coach, men's soccer coach Louis Bennett announces he is stepping down from the program after 18 years in charge. Bennett has helped to bring the Golden Eagles to three NCAA tournaments in his 18 years and won the Big East Tournament in 2013. In a press release from this morning, Bennett said, quote, My time at Marquette, the graduates, the pro drafts, the Sweet 16 appearances, Big East championships, all have given me joy, but none more than the great relationships and true friendships I've been exposed to over my whole collegiate experience. Marquette Athletics will begin their search for a new head coach immediately. Members of the university come together at a yearly event to support survivors of sexual violence. The event, known as Take Back the Night, is observed internationally. And students met in the AMU to observe. The night included a candlelight vigil and a speak out, which encourages survivors of sexual violence to share their stories. Part of giving people their voice back is literally having space for them to speak. And you know, just providing community and letting people know that they're not alone is part of the reason why it's so important for events like this. MUPD reported nine sexual offenses committed on campus in 2022. The event, along with the Center for Student Wellness and Health Promotion, used the night to show that there are ways of seeking help if they aren't ready to report to law enforcement. Sexual assault sexual goes assault. greatly underreported um, due to many barriers and challenges that people um, perceive or people definitely feel for reporting a sexual assault. Um, one of them is fear or threats against them, you know, to like, if they were to report. The Student for Student Wellness and Health Promotion has a 24-7 hotline for those seeking help. The number can be found on your screen. Select option two to speak to a trained mental health professional. Calling all shopaholics and Colts cash lovers in the downtown Milwaukee area, a new Kohl's store will be opening downtown this Friday on West Wisconsin Avenue and Vell R. Phillips Avenue just in time for the season of giving and gifting. The new 35,000 square foot design will be spacious, including a 2,500 square foot Sephora. In addition to the new layout, there will also be an assortment of merchandise showcasing brands that are local to Milwaukee that capture the essence of downtown during the season. And with the weather recently, it's definitely starting to feel like that type of year to start doing holiday shopping. Joining us now is Allison McMillan for what conditions we can expect outside. Any more snow in the forecast, Allison? No snow, thankfully. Thanks, Sam. Let's take a look at tonight's forecast. It is mostly cloudy with a low of 33 degrees. Humidity is sitting at 67 with no chance of rain and the southwest wind keeping calm at 10 miles per hour. On to state overnight lows. Up north we see temperatures heading down into the low 20s with Superior at 23 and Minocqua at 21. Milwaukee stays just a touch warmer than Madison at 33 compared to 30 in our state's capital. Now let's see tomorrow's state low highs. Southwest Wisconsin comes in with Eau Claire at 41 and La Crosse at just a touch warmer at 45. Meanwhile, Madison's high sits at 47 and Milwaukee at 50. Now for tomorrow's forecast. Campus will be mostly cloudy with a high of 50 degrees, humidity with around 67%, with a 63% chance of rain and wind at around 12 miles per hour. Last but not least, let's check our five-day extended weather forecast. It's going to be a rainy week with the exception of Saturday, with highs in the 50s and lows hitting the 30s. Enjoy that Saturday because we'll be seeing plenty of rain throughout the next week. Now don't go anywhere, we'll have more news after the break in just 60 seconds. 
patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason, because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Sometimes, the things we do or say can make others feel hurt, excluded, or isolated. Everything you say and do creates an impact. How am I supposed to save the whole world? You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Taking a look at more news around Milwaukee and beyond now. Cobean Dining Hall is back, open after being closed since October 4th. Plumbing issues led to the shutdown and those inside the residence hall were redirected to other dining halls across campus. The dining hall had a grand reopening earlier this afternoon. Marquette Athletics is implementing a new clear bag policy at all home games on campus. This includes all games at the Al McGuire Center and Valley Fields. The policy is beginning to make sporting events safer and entry quicker. Fans may continue to carry approved items without a bag, such as phones and cameras. Athletics will also be selling clear bags for attendees to purchase or can receive a clear gallon bag free of charge. Basketball season tips off next Monday for both the men's and women's basketball teams. The women's team faces the University of Texas Martin at noon at the L. McGuire Center. Then, later in the night, the men's team begins their season against the Northern Illinois University Huskies at 7.30 p.m. at Pfizer Forum. There will be a Big East Championship banner raising before tip-off. Before the season, news multimedia journalist Tay Kramer sat down with sports editor Jack Albright. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Jack Albright, executive sports editor for the Marquette Wire, and today we will be looking at the Marquette men and women's basketball teams as a season preview. The Golden Eagles are coming in ranked number five in the preseason AP Top 25 poll. Jack, do you think this is a fair ranking? Yeah, Tay, it's definitely justified. You lose a starter in Olivier Maxson's prosper, but you retain so much scoring. 87.9% of the scoring from last year is coming back for the Shaka Smart team. And let's not beat around the bush. We all know Smart uses everybody. It's not five players for 40 minutes. It's five players for 25, and then you get three or four more in for 10 to 15 minutes of play. Is this, if this team wasn't set up as much with the importance of depth, it'd be a different story, but losing the starter, you still have people that can then fill in that role. And it's gonna be a multiple person effort just because of how important Omax was to Marquette, but with the amount of people that they have that can do it, 100% number five in the country is justified. Which player should we expect to make a major jump from last year? Uh, I think there's been a little bit of a joke going on around with this Mark Hetman's basketball program about how the Big East Sixth Man of the Year is staying in Milwaukee. Chase Ross uh, was the second guy off the bench now that Joplin is the presumptive starter, and Chase Ross is now going to be that first guy off the bench. Everybody all offseason has been talking about how this guy can make the leap. You saw the athleticism last season. In every single thing that he's played, preseason, especially in that blue and gold scrimmage, he was getting to the rim. He was shooting effectively. He was shooting with confidence, which you didn't see last season. And when you have a guy going up to the guy who won the biggest sixth man of the year saying, I'm winning it for you again, I mean, you can only look to Chase Ross to be this guy that really jumps up. I mean, Shaka Smart has been saying all year, Chase Ross is a dude, on all caps, dude in all caps. So <laughs> he's really the guy that, that I look towards to make a big jump and put himself in a national spotlight. Now let's turn to the women's team. Coming into this season, the team has only six returning players. Just how big are the losses of Chloe Murata and Emily LaChapelle this season? Uh, absolutely massive. You look at Chloe Murata, for the latter half of the year, she averaged a double-double. Averaged a double-double. Didn't, didn't get it every now and again, averaged it. So that really shows her consistency on both ends of the floor, and especially her impact in the paint. As for, as for Emily LaChapelle, highest rated recruit for Duffy ever in first in state one, and she leaves and goes to Belmont. She started in the majority of the games last year for Marquette, so she's definitely a big loss. And it's really just, she was the future, so I think we're going to see the impact of her loss 
of her leaving really make its presence felt in two, three years. But for this season, Chloe Murata is absolutely massive. Don't even get me started. You know, all big East team last year, all big East preseason team last year. She was an absolute menace for Marquette from start to finish. And without her, the Golden Eagles are definitely going to be feeling uh, a lot worse. What expectations should we have from this team that for this season? How deep could the tournament runs be? Marquette was voted number three in the, in the Big East preseason poll among all the coaches. Uh, the coaches believe in her. I think just because of how many moving pieces there were, it's a little bit difficult to gauge where they are. If they finish third, I won't be shocked. If they finish fifth, I won't be shocked. All I can say is that I don't think they're going to be worse than fifth because I think they return too much talent. I think Jordan King's way too good, and that will not happen. And then I also think Creighton and UConn are a little bit too far ahead for them to finish second or first. So anywhere in that third to fifth range, I think, is right where the Golden Eagles will finish. And in terms of the NCAA tournament, they had a rough loss to South Florida. That fourth quarter was very, very difficult for them. And they can make it back to the big dance. It's how can you get past the first round? Two years ago, they lost to Virginia Tech in the first round. Then you lose to South Florida in the first round. Can they make it over that hump and, and get that tournament win, get to the second round? And that's going to be the bigger question. Not if they can make it, but what they can do if they do make it. Thank you, Jack. The women's team has their first matchup of the season as they face UT Martin next Monday at the Al McGuire Center. Once again, Jack Albright, sports editor here at the Marquette Wire, Thank you so much for joining us. Back to you at the desk. You can catch the full 12 minute interview with Jack Albright on the MUTV YouTube page. And for a more in depth preview of the 2023 24 Marquette basketball rosters, tune in to a special edition of Golden Eagle Sports Report tomorrow night at 7. Join Kristen Parisi and the team as they discuss their expectations for the Golden Eagles this year. Coming up after the break, each week, we like to highlight a member of the Marquette Wire and the stories they've been covering over the past week. We'll be sitting down with Joey Schomber about his recent column about respecting indigenous culture when Marquette Now returns. Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight, both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. We're not in your hand trying to text somebody back because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> Over. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Every day, millions of people are connecting. Father, cosplayer, mentor, actor. It's time we take a step forward, come together, and discover how accepting our differences can make, make us stronger. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. Welcome back to Marquette Now. Each week, we like to highlight a member of the Marquette Wire and the stories they've been covering over the past week in our Down to the Wire segment. That's right. Today, we're joined by Marquette Wire Opinions column Joey Schamber to talk about his recent column about National American Indian Heritage Month in this week's Marquette Tribune. Joey, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thank you for having me. Of course. So your column this week is about respecting indigenous culture. 
And starting off, we're kicking National uh, Native American Heritage Month uh, today. Now, in your column, you talk about how Halloween season can lead to indigenous people facing discrimination. Can you tell us why that is? Yeah, so in the past, we've seen a lot of people use other people's cultures as Halloween costumes. And that's really harmful because it um, reinforces really negative stereotypes. Um, in addition to that, I talk about um, negative uh, media tropes that we see um, that really paint people, um, particularly Native Americans, in a really harmful light. Yeah, and so, like you were saying, what are some of those examples of outdated stereotypes against indigenous people in media that maybe people gloss over a little bit? So yeah, in my column, I focus primarily on the trope of the Indian burial ground, um, which is really harmful because it sort of dehumanizes on these Native Americans and reduces them to this stereotypical like savage or mystical creature um, instead of showing them as regular human beings just like everyone else. And sure. what makes these tropes so damaging to these communities? Um, so as I mentioned, it really dehumanizes them. Um, we don't want to see that type of representation in film um, when other people are much more accurately represented. Um, and the Indian burial ground in particular is just really harmful because it reinforces fear of Native people. It um, assuages uh, white guilt. Um, in general, it's just not the type of thing we want to see in our current media environment. Yeah, and now I want to talk about the fact that Marquette University was actually built on indigenous land. Um, and you write in your column, we have a responsibility to these displaced nations to hold ourselves to a higher standard. How can the university do that? How have we done that? Um, I think that Marquette has done a good job recently in terms of um, establishing a better relationship with Native American people on this campus. Um, for example, our land and water agreement and the way that's been commemorated with a recent statue that was built in the spring. Um, I also like to see that we are doing more work with um, the Native American Student Association on campus. Um, but I'd also like to see more um, Native American faculty um, having higher positions at Marquette University. And finally, are there any ways that students or anyone who is interested in educating themselves better on National Native American Heritage Month, any resources that they can check out? Yeah, so um, Marquette is hosting a lot of um, activities this month. Um, in particular, there's one um, event that I think really works in association with the column I just wrote. Um, it is a film a short film screening happening on November 21st. Uh, it's a short film called Ghost. It is um, produced by um, Native Americans or by a Native American director. Um, and it, I think, shows a more realistic picture okay. of um, uh, how Native Americans want to be rep represented in media. For That's sure. amazing. Well, Joseph Schomber, opinions columnist for the Marquette Tribune, thank you so much for joining us here on Marquette Now. Thank Still you. to come here on Marquette Now, the Marquette Radio Fall Concert lineup has been released. We'll be talking to some of the people behind the concert and what you can expect. Awkward. I'm the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Roll over. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother. They're a little bit of a lot of things but they're all pure love. Every day, millions of people are connecting. 
father. Cosplayer. Mentor. Actor. It's time we take a step forward, come together, and discover how accepting our differences can make us stronger. Welcome back to Marquette Now. I'm Sam Bond, and taking a look ahead now at the events that you can expect around campus this coming week. Marquette University will be celebrating Native American Heritage Month beginning this month. Each Wednesday, students can register for a beading circle. Attendees can create a beading project over the course of four sessions, led by Oneida Nation leader Sarah Dida. Later in the month, there will also be a Native American Heritage Dinner and a short film screening. The Marquette Filmmakers Association will be hosting their annual 24-hour film race. Attendees will create a group and use the course of 24 hours to write, film, edit, and screen a film themselves. The event begins Friday at 6 p.m. and will end on Saturday with a red carpet and a screening of all the films at the Varsity Theater. You can register for the event by filling out the form after scanning the QR code on your screen. As the temperatures begin to cool down across Milwaukee, the Alumni Memorial Union is hosting a fall coat drive. It runs through November 10th. You can drop off any used jackets, sweaters, and winter coats. There is a drop-off bin next to the AMU information desk. All donated items will go to the nearby Milwaukee Rescue Mission. Marquette Radio is hosting its annual fall concert, this year with a new name. The concert, known last year as Ring It Out, will be held in the Sports Annex on Friday, November 10th. Attendees can enjoy four different Wisconsin-based acts throughout the night. Lake Waves Trio, H. Kane, Killer High Life, and Super Glue are all scheduled to perform. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. and the show will begin shortly after at 7. The concert will be broadcast in its entirety right here on Marquette University Television. Joining me now to talk about the concert are the music directors at Marquette Radio, Pat Swanson and Tom Effling. Guys, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thanks so much for yeah, having Thank you. So for some of us who may not know, can you tell me a little bit of like general information about the concert, what some uh, attendees can expect? I mean, yeah, as was just said, you know, doors at 6.30, show starts at 7. We've got four great bands and artists performing. Sure. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of fun events. I mean, great shows, awesome. great music. Yeah, yeah. we run uh, about th usually three concerts throughout the school year, and this is our first one uh, that we're doing. This is our fall concert. Artists will be there set up with their merchandise tents, uh, things like that. So, yeah, it's going to be a really good show. Sure. And who are some of the artists that you both are looking forward to seeing? We're all looking forward to seeing all of them, really. It's, it's going to be it's sure. a great lineup. But me in particular, I'm really excited to see H. Kane. I mean, he's a bit of a local legend. You know, he runs a record label. He's been in the game for, like, how long now? Like Since uh, 2001, I yeah, believe. Yeah, 2001. A few hiatuses in there, but, like, that's besides the point. I mean, he's a father, visionary musician. We're, I'm, I'm really pumped awesome. to see his energy on stage. Yeah. And I would say I'm personally most intrigued by Lake Wave Trio. Okay. Um, they're spearheaded by Graham Marlowe, a pianist, keyboardist, who describes himself as a th synth synthesizer graffiti artist, mm -hmm. and uh, says that their music can fit anywhere from a quinceanera in northern LA to um, a spontaneous outbreak of dance. Sure. So that kind of jazz fusion space influence sound is something I'm really excited awesome. to see how it translates yeah. to a live setting. Yeah. Awesome. And then can you guys tell me a little bit about the process of getting these artists to perform? Yeah, it was really a testament, um, this whole process, to the great work of the team last year. Um, Emily Bittman and her team did a really great job of establishing the Marquette Radio <laughs> within the Milwaukee music scene. So we were really fortunate and had most of the artists come to us. The hardest part was just putting together the Google form that they had to fill out. And then uh, after that, it was really just deciding which of the great artists that we wanted to choose. So um, it, was, it was a pretty simple process. And I'd say that picking the artist was really what was most difficult. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of lengthy discussion and, and meetings regarding it. And we, I mean, yeah, we had so many just great artists and bands to pick through. And it, it took a while to kind of distill it down to like, what mm -hmm. would the Marquette public want to see? What do we feel best represents the tastes sure. of our college when it comes to you know, the music side of things? But there was a lot of discussion going into it. Yeah, and then to that point, do you know any of these artists personally? Yeah, I, of you? yeah Killer High Life, uh, they, they all go here and yeah. Awesome, yeah. They, I think they started in Marquette Music Club and they recently played at Cactus Club, which is one of our favorite venues. Yeah, it was, it was really cool to see them because uh, they are a more recent band, get an opportunity at one of those um, seminal indie rock Milwaukee venues like uh, Cactus Club, so we're really excited mm -hmm. uh, with them for them w coming into the fall concert with that experience. Yeah. And I, I, I haven't gotten to see them yet, but I've had a few friends who are able to make it to the show, and 
like I've heard nothing but great reviews. They're apparently just great performers, and they're great people outside that too. Yeah, yeah I have a core class with their lead singer Brennan. Very nice person. Awesome. Shout yeah. out. Cool. And it looks like there's a couple different um, genres of music represented here. Why was it important to include, um, you know, the different genres? I mean, I mean, just because of the, I mean, general diversity of campus, but also sure. the diversity in music taste. Course, we want to make sure yeah. we put on a show that represents, you know, our community and the different musical tastes mm -hmm. that are represented by it. Yeah, and uh, off of that, not only to um, represent what people are listening to, but what we think uh, people should be listening to or different types of music that they might not be familiar with that we want to expose them to. You might have someone coming for H. Kane's rap set, but maybe they've never really listened to jazz and they'll be introduced to that type of music through the Lake Wave Trio opening set. Or someone who is more of a rock fan and might be blown away by what H. Kane can do sure. on stage. So just kind of also exposing people to um, new artists and genres and things awesome. like that. I love that. And I, I feel it's also representative of what we try to do as a station on campus too. Definitely. Just kind of showing all the different tastes and identities w within it and helping to serve as a tastemaker for Marquette's campus. Yeah, for sure. And then I have to ask finally before I let you go, yesterday was Halloween and the whole Marquette radio dressed up as clowns together. Can you tell me the backstory behind this? So I mean obviously we're on Marquette radio and our, our manager Sam Bon, he um he sat us down the other day and, and basically said, you know, his whole life he's loved clowns. Like, I mean, Krusty the Clown in The Simpsons was his first, but then moved up to It, moved to the Joker one. He would Specifically the Joker, he yeah. cites a lot of influence from. He would walk in and be and say, I'm the Joker, baby. <laughs> and yeah, it was, mm -hmm. so oh he God. sat us down and said, like, I feel more comfortable in right. clown makeup. And we all, in solidarity with him yesterday, we all down clown makeup. I was Fletcher Shears from oh The Garden. Uh, RJ was one of the clowns from Dark Knight, I believe, <laughs> and it, you know it was in solidarity for That's Sam Bond. So great. We hold him very I love dear. That. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Pat and Tom, for joining me. Um, once again, Autumn Rhythm takes place November 10th at the Annex. Doors open at 6:30, and the show begins at 7. You can also catch our live coverage of the concert right here on Marquette Television. Don't go anywhere. We'll have one last look at the weather for you when you head out tomorrow morning. We'll be right back. Have you ever seen you ever somebody seen treated color unfairly color because of the color of their skin? Do you guys know what it means to have white privilege? What is racism and what do you think about it? Talk to young children about what racism is, giving them the language to understand it. They can be disruptors. They can shape and shift culture. We may not always know the answer, but we'll try and help you learn. You don't have to have all the answers, but that doesn't mean we can't start. There are a lot of ways to reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. What are you looking for? is precise, no margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun. Welcome back. Before we go, we want to take one last look outside with Allison McMillan. How's it looking out there as we close out this Wednesday? It's looking not too bad. Right now we are looking at a cloudy evening with chilly temperatures at 33 and humidity at 67. There is no chance of rain tonight and southwest winds are blowing at 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow morning as you head out to class, we are looking at a cloudy day with the temperature and humidity at 69%. There is no chance of rain and southwest winds at 12 miles per hour. That's all for Marquette's weather. Back to you, Sam. Thank you. Coming up weekly on MUTV, wrap up this week with Golden Eagle Sports Report on a special day, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Next week, we'll be back on our weekly schedule with another episode of GESR on Tuesday and Marquette Lately on Thursday. And of course, join us again next Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. for another episode of Marquette Now. Until then, check out MarquetteWire.org for more up-to-the-moment campus news. Thanks again for joining us from the Jeannie Hayes Virtual Studio. I'm Sam Bond. And I'm Aaron Howard. Good, Good night, night Marquette. Marquette.